In this screencast, I'm going to introduce the idea of uniform circular motion. An object is undergoing uniform circular motion if it's moving in a circle and its speed is not changing. There are lots of examples of this kind of motion, but the one that always springs to my mind is the classic playground merry-go-round. These were popular when I was young, although they're mostly gone from playgrounds now. The way this ride works is that someone pushes on the edge to spin the merry-go-round while others enjoy the ride. I put these dogs on the ride because I thought it might be tough to get permission to use pictures of real children, but the one on the right is actually my dog, Mandy. Looking at this scene, you may or may not have some intuition about which dog would experience a more intense ride. By the end of this screencast, you should be able to use physics to understand why the ride experience varies depending on how far away from the axis of rotation a rider sits. Here's a more sterile animation that shows a particle, the pink dot, undergoing uniform circular motion. The velocity of the particle is shown in blue. As you can see, the length of the velocity vector is not changing, indicating that the speed is constant. So if the speed is not changing, do you think the particle is accelerating? Even though the speed remains constant, the direction of motion is changing. Drawing the particle at a second position helps to emphasize this idea. Since the direction of motion is changing, the velocity is changing, and therefore the particle is accelerating. This acceleration that results from a direction change is called centripetal acceleration, and I'm going to skip right to the punchline for a moment to tell you that the magnitude of centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. The rest of this video is devoted to deriving this result. So remember that average acceleration is defined as delta v over delta t. And also remember that delta v can be written as vf minus vi. Here's vf and here's vi. To subtract vi from vf, just turn vi around and delta v is what's left over. Take a look at these two triangles. They're similar to each other. You probably believe me, but you can prove it yourself with geometry. The small angles have to be the same because both velocity vectors are tangent to the circle and also perpendicular to the radii. Both triangles are also isosceles, and so they must be similar to each other. I'm going to take advantage of that fact in a moment, but first I'll just point out that the length of the short side of the green triangle should be equal to v delta t since distance is equal to rate times time. The next trick is to use similar triangles to compare the ratios of the side lengths of the two triangles. Comparing the green triangle to the blue triangle, v delta t over r is equal to delta v over v. Rearranging, we find that delta v over delta t, which is of course acceleration, is equal to v squared over r. This is a special kind of acceleration that has to do with moving in a circle, and as such, it is referred to as centripetal acceleration, and that's indicated by the subscript C. The last thing to consider is, what is the direction of the acceleration? Take a look at delta V here. Let me make delta T very small and move delta V over so that it's at the same position as the particle. Delta V is clearly pointing toward the center of the circle, so delta V over delta T would do the same, and so the centripetal acceleration points toward the center of the circle. That might seem like a lot of work to arrive at a pretty simple result, but I've always loved this derivation because it comes so beautifully out of the definition of acceleration and some basic geometry. To end, I want to return to the playground merry-go-round that I mentioned earlier and ask which dog experiences a greater centripetal acceleration. The one experiencing the greater acceleration will also experience the more intense ride. To answer this question, start with the definition of centripetal acceleration, and notice that the speed of each dog is equal to 2 pi r over t. t in this equation is the time it takes the dog to go around, or the period of rotation. Because both dogs are sitting on the same disk, the time to go around is the same for both, but they're not the same distance away from the axis of rotation. Substituting 2 pi r over t into the equation for centripetal acceleration and rearranging a bit yields this expression. t is the same for both dogs, but r is not. Looking at the equation, one can see that the dog further from the axis of rotation experiences a greater centripetal acceleration. So Floppy Ears on the left has a wilder ride, and Mandy, who happens to be a rather timid dog, is appropriately placed close to the axis of rotation. To recap, whenever an object moves in a circle with constant speed, it is accelerating. The centripetal acceleration points toward the center of the circle, and the magnitude is v squared over r. Students often get tricked into thinking that a particle in uniform circular motion is not accelerating, so be sure to remember this result each time you encounter circular motion.